Hello, sir. My name is Grissing, the head doctor of this hospital. If I may speak freely, sir, we expected more than just an officer's rank to support our current situation. Yeah, well, I'm Captain Fantastic, so shut your fucking cake hole. I'm here to take charge of this field hospital and keep men alive. Now, in World War One, they realised by the time you got a man back to a real hospital, he would bleed to death. So they set up field hospitals behind the lines. And you're basically an officer in charge of a field hospital, and your job is to build a pharmacy, research new technology, order supplies, hire new surgeons and new nurses, and move everyone around. And most importantly, you've got to patch up soldiers and send them back to the front line to fight. Because if they don't fight, then the front line will be overwhelmed. And if you lose the front line, the hospital will also be overwhelmed by the German army. So it's very important to keep sending soldiers back to the front. You can also choose to send them home, which adds a real emotional depth to the game because, you know, you'd rather send soldiers home than send them to die. But you understand if they don't go back to the front, we could end up losing the whole goddamn war. Sir, medics are on the way. Now, when this game starts, it is a bit slow, it is a bit repetitive, and it does look a bit dull and boring, but as it gets better, you start seeing it take a more of an emotional toll on you, because at the end of the day, you get a hospital full of soldiers, and some of them can't be saved, and you've got to make big decisions about which ones you can save and which ones you can't. And the game gets a little bit like Papers, Please, where you have to judge each individual and decide their fate. The only problem is it isn't quite as emotionally good as that game. And some of the soldiers just seem all the same after a while. And eventually you're just sending men home or sending them to the front and you really don't give a shit. And that's where the game lets you down a little bit. But when the game first came out, it got slated, not because of the gameplay, but because the game was broken. It was full of bugs and glitches. It got like 5 out of 10 and 2 out of 5. People were giving it really bad reviews. And that's mainly because of the glitches and the bugs. And that's why I don't review games. Because when games come out, they always get bad reviews, mainly because they're broken. You have to wait for patches. When games come out these days, they're broken. That's why I don't review them. I wait until they've been patched, and then I can give the game a fair you know, a fair shake of the stick, because otherwise I'm judging a game that really isn't finished. It was just released for a deadline, and it's not at its best. So I like to wait and see what happens after a few patches. And for me, this game looks good, and it's got good graphics, and it plays well. And in fact, it was quite a big hit on console. Ironically, it wasn't such a big hit on PC, because they've got a lot of real-time strategy games. But on console, there aren't very many good real-time strategy games, and this one is one of the better ones. Now, as you play the game, you've got to build a lot of stuff. You've got to unlock new technologies. You can build new things like x-rays. You've got to build a pharmacy. You've got to order supplies. There's a lot to be done. And this is part of the micromanaging of this field hospital. And it is quite taxing. At the start, it's quite simple. And it's quite easy to get into this game. It's quite basic. But it does get more complicated as it goes on. So what I'm doing now is I'm sending over my little engineer. And he should basically build this entire building it'll take time but he will build the pharmacy and then we can make our own supplies instead of having to order everything and basically you have to micromanage the entire field hospital you have to employ the doctors the nurses build every building build extensions onto buildings build new operating theaters you have to run everything order supplies but the game doesn't really get going until more soldiers get injured and then you have to decide which ones go home and which ones go back to the front and you've got to keep the trenches filled otherwise the germans will overwhelm you Sir, 
New patients arrive. Now the game may start off slow but eventually it becomes hard and relentless. In fact your hospital will be full of so many injured soldiers you can't help them all. So you have to look at their chances of surviving an operation. You have to make decisions which ones can survive and which ones are going to die. You can't waste you know, resources on men who are going to die. You have to make sure you help people who've got a good chance of survival. So there is a real moral aspect to this game. Now, these types of real-time strategy games aren't for everybody. Some people will find them, you know, as boring as shit. I mean, they're not going to be into this. Others will love it. You know, PC guys tend to love these kind of games. And to be honest, this game wasn't such a big hit on PC, but that was mainly because of the bugs. I actually think, you know, now the bugs have been cleared up and it's been patched, you know, it's a pretty decent game, and I think it's definitely worth a chance. In this game, you are the head honcho. You really are in charge of everything. I mean, you hire people, you make decisions, you have to keep all these soldiers alive. I mean, basically, you have to make big choices and big decisions. I mean, when it comes to operating on patients, sometimes you have to cut corners and keep, you know, keep them alive. Other times you have to do it by the book. But it's up to you. You make the big decisions. And whether it's upgrading pieces of equipment or making decisions in the operating fit or whether a patient might live or die, it depends on you. And that's where the, you know, the fun is in the game, I suppose. That's where the, the pressure is. And that's where the intensity is. Now, at the start of the game, you've only got one surgeon, and if he gets too tired from overwork, he'll end up collapsing, and then he can't do any work until he's gone to bed and got some sleep. And then you've got patients just lying around, getting sick, dying, while he's getting some rest. So you've really got to make sure you really organise things properly and try and hire another surgeon as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you'll end up making a total ass of your field hospital and fucking everything up. Now, when this game first came out, it got unfair comparisons to Frostpunk. I mean, Frostpunk is a much better game. There's no doubt about that. But that doesn't mean that this is a shit game. It's just not as good as that. It is a little bit repetitive, but I enjoyed the challenge of running a field hospital in one of the worst wars in human history. I mean, I really enjoyed that. It was a relentless challenge, and I found it very addictive. Now, I've played a lot of better real-time strategy games than this, and I have to be honest, you know, I play better games, but there's something about this. Yes, it's a hospital management game, but it's got that World War I setting, and yes, it's a bit repetitive, but then so is World War I. 
you know soldiers get shot they come to the hospital you patch them up and send them back to the front again that's basically what it is but there's enough in this game there's enough gameplay you know you can upgrade stuff you can hire people there's enough to do and there's a lot of pressure and that pressure gets very relentless and that's where the game really has a hook and that's what i enjoyed about it Lieutenant Colonel Angus McFiddler, commanding the 36th. My orders are to set up a temporary line of defense north of here, but I will not be able to do that with our limited forces. I understand. How can we help, Lieutenant Colonel? Heal as many of the soldiers from the front line as possible. Having them reinforce our defensive line will help our men significantly. How many do you need? As many as you can provide, I'm afraid. Intelligence reports suggest that Germans will launch an attack on our position on the 8th of June, probably around noon. What about reinforcements from HQ? There will be none. Not until the 21st of June, at least. HQ is gathering forces and regrouping for a major counter-offensive. Our orders are to survive on our own until that day. <laughs> on our own? This is a hospital, not a military camp. How do they expect us to manage that? We will be given the best intelligence reports they have. We will know about every attack and the estimated size of the attacking force in advance. That's the best HQ could give us. I understand, Lieutenant Colonel. There are old trenches nearby. You can set up defenses there. We will try to send enough men to survive enemy attacks. Once the game gets to the trenches bit and you see all the soldiers at the front, it adds a new dynamic. You realise how many men you need. You know, you realise the size of the German force against you. And this makes it a much more interesting game because now you've literally got to send men to the front in order to hold back the Germans. And you can kind of see what's going on as well by visiting the trenches. I'd give War Hospital 77% out of 100 because it is a good game. Yes, when it came out, it got slated because of the bugs and the glitches. But now they've been ironed out and it's had its patches. You can play this and realize it's a relentless, demanding, you know, decent game. And it was also a hit on console. And that was a big surprise because normally these kind of games don't get released on console. And this one did. And it was a big hit. So... You know, you can't say fairer than that. If console owners like it, it must be a good game. And I think it deserves a lot more credit than it got. When War Hospital came out, it was a bit like a soldier that had been through the war. I mean, it had lost its arms and its legs, and people looked at it and said, I don't like the look of that. It looks kind of crap. But now it's been to the hospital, and it's been patched up, and it's had a few operations. To be honest, the game's looking pretty healthy, and I liked it. It's a bit repetitive at times, but it's also demanding, and it can be quite enjoyable. The bottom line is, despite the reviews when it came out, War Hospital is actually a good game. In fact, if you like games like Papers, Please, I'm pretty sure you'd like this game, so uh, I'd give it a go.
Station to secure. 